Well, hello there, random viewer. Welcome back. I'm Archie Stormcloud, and I want to thank you for tuning in to this guide on how to find food fast in DayZ. Lately, I've been noticing a growing grievance amongst the new and returning survivors regarding how difficult they have at locating food items. The comment sections on every post from the DayZ team are overflowing with the complaints of disgruntled players who couldn't make it off the coast without succumbing to the famished inland areas of Chinaris. So with that, I decided to put this guide together to hopefully alleviate some of that confusion and save your stepfathers from having to patch any more holes in the drywall of your bedroom. There are certainly a profusion of ways one can perish in DayZ. You could be clipped into a wall collider swarmed by a horde of desynced zombies motivated by hunger-induced rage and bad netcode. You could be slowly disemboweled by a bubonic pond water plague. Or you could have your peaceful summer survival simulator bombarded by boogaloo bears. So let's make sure that out of all the ways one could find themselves back on the sandy fishing hook covered beaches of Chinaris, that it isn't because you starved to death. Right away, jump into your inventory and smash that given fruit like Gallagher, baby. Now let's go out there and rustle up some chow before some other miserable bastard beats us to it. Wow, look at that. We're already at tip number one, don't sprint. Energy conservation is key. Sprinting, vaulting, swimming, and melee all burn calories. Let's keep it at a nice, brisk jog while we search for food, okay? The first thing you should be doing is checking the static beached boat spawns on the coasts. These spawn food items such as canned foods and drinks, dry sacks, dry bags, fishing hooks and fishing rods, which we'll need for food collection, and also raincoats. Take all of these items. Raincoats are a very important means of keeping your survivor from becoming wet, heavy, and cold. Cold and rainy weather is detrimental to your core stats. When a player is suffering from exposure, their non-waterproof clothing will become wet and heavy. Your survivor will also burn more calories the colder you become. Raincoats drastically reduce the chances of hypothermia and saturation. For more detailed guides on avoiding hypothermia and exposure due to the elements, click the link above. The next best place to find food is inside of greenhouses and polytunnels. These spawn canned drinks, canned foods, fresh fruits and vegetables, and also seed packs. The foodstuffs can be found resting on the soil in the planter boxes. Next we're going to check under fruit trees. There are three varieties of fruit trees. Pear tree, the plum tree, and the apple tree. These trees spawn everywhere towns, cities, hamlets, and in the forests. You don't have to do anything special to harvest the fruit. If it's there, it's lying beneath the canopy. Fruits usually spawn in pairs. Sometimes they can be hard to spot, so open your inventory and check the vicinity section to avoid missing one. For more in-depth guides on fruit trees, click the link on screen above. Survivors often mistake dried fruits for rotten fruits. Dried fruits are safe to eat and will be labeled as dried. Rotten fruits will cause salmonellosis sickness and will be labeled as rotten. In the time it took you to complain on every single DayZ post about not finding food, you could have just checked that. Also, I swear to God, if you're sprinting right now, I'm going to tell everyone that you're an adult bedwetter. Slow it down. Next, let's cover some less fruitful means of gathering food. Elderberries and rose hips can be found in the vicinity of their respective bushes. They spawn everywhere along roadways and paths, in and around all towns and cities, as well as inside of forests. Berries can be consumed raw, but tend to be somewhat difficult to find in abundance. Also, they're not very nutritious. I wouldn't go out of your way to try and find them because they're not sufficient enough to subsidize the amount of energy burned foraging them. However, if you do happen upon them, eat them. They're perfectly safe. For a more detailed guide on harvesting berries, Click the given link above. Mushrooms can be found in abundance all over the map, especially after rain showers. They most commonly grow near hay bales, inside pig barns, and along tree lines of the forest. All variations of mushrooms are safe to eat. They provide a fairly significant amount of nutrition to your survivor and can be consumed raw. For a more detailed guide on mushrooms, click the link above. 
Most people will tell you to kill zombies for food. I disagree. There's only about a 10% chance in my experience that Zez will have food on them, and while nothing tastes better than an apple that has been in the back pocket of a rotting corpse for the last month, all you're going to do is take damage and waste calories by running or fighting, and even more by healing. Taking damage costs calories and hydration. Avoid zombies at all costs until you find a suppressed weapon that can dispatch them quietly. Gunshots draw dozens more zombies, and even worse, other survivors. Once you've gotten a couple handfuls of food into you, we're going to look for the most important tool in the game, a knife. And don't panic if you can't locate a knife or machete. Stone knives can be crafted with ease. To craft a knife, you need to combine two small stones. These small stones can be found along railroad tracks and hiking trails. In my experience, they're much more likely to spawn on the trails than the railroad tracks. Find yourself a rest area and follow the trail staying as close to the coast as possible until you find two small stones. The trails are color coordinated red, blue, yellow, and green on the map to make traversing them a breeze. Follow the indicators which can be found on trees, rocks, placards, and posts to keep yourselves oriented. For a more in-depth guide on maps, markers, and trails, click the link on screen. Once you have located two small stones, combine them in your hands to create a stone knife. Now that you've crafted your stone knife, don't go too crazy with it. Be very perceptive of your improvised knife's durability level. These little bastards get worn out faster than a cute Amish girl on Rumspringa. They can, however, be repaired using a sharpening stone by combining the two items in your hands. Most people will suggest that hunting for food is the best means for sustaining your survivor during your adventures. I disagree. Animal calls can be detected for hundreds of meters. Tracking game can be laborious. Once you've shot the creatures, they often flee into the distance and become almost undetectable. Tracking wounded game is time consuming, and covering all of that ground will severely deplete your survivor's caloric reserves, resulting in further dehydration and starvation. Not to mention the amount of holes you have to blow through our fluffy forest friends to dispatch them renders the meat almost useless. For these reasons, I do not recommend hunting for game other than poultry. Fowl like hens and roosters can be found around cities, towns, villages, and hamlets. They'll almost always be heard before they're seen. Dispatch them quickly and use your stone knife to skin and quarter the animal. Take the two breasts to your inventory. The bones can be processed into bone hooks for fishing using your stone knife as well. Just don't forget to wash your hands afterward. Bloody hands can cause salmonellosis sickness and wreak havoc on your poor stats. A much quicker way to find food is to dig up worms and go fishing. Dig up worms by equipping the stone knife to your hand and looking directly at the ground. Then find a water source like the sea, ponds, creeks, or tributaries and begin fishing. Once you've caught your fish, combine it with the knife to prepare the fillet. Craft a small fireplace or find a stove inside a house to cook the fillet. The fish will cook on a stove top in about two and a half minutes. Fish will keep you fuller and warmer longer. You should always have a couple of fish fillets in your inventory. For a more in-depth look at fishing, click the given link above. Once you've satiated that growling tummy, you may feel that you should save on inventory space and leave food sources behind as you journey on. This is a terrible and deadly strategy. Every food item you find should be consumed or stored in your inventory. If you don't have space, eat the food on the spot. Or as I like to say, don't yeet it, eat it. In my opinion, the worst advice given to new players is to run inland as quickly as possible. Most of the major cities and towns can be found along the coast. Yes, these areas have likely been picked through like a dumpster at a homeless shelter, but a knowledgeable survivor will know exactly where to look to find virtually guaranteed edible loot. Towns are sparsely spread across the center areas of the map, and packaged food can be a scarcity. Never leave the coast until you're fat. And there you go. You're now equipped with plenty of early game knowledge to help you not only survive, but to thrive. 
I sincerely hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to all of my subscribers who consistently support this channel and our community. Please leave a like because it helps us in the algorithm. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, come and see us on Twitch. And until then, I'm Archie Stormcloud, and I'll see you in Janaris.